Well, I've actually got some collapsed animal lungs in front of me. So let's take a look at them now. So here we see the, uh, basically the contents of the thoracic cavity from a sheep. We've got the, uh, the lung here and the lung here. And of course, here's the, here's the heart in the middle. And you can see the coronary arteries going over the, the surface of the heart. And um, actually, you can't really see the visceral pleural membrane because it's over the surface of the lung here and it invaginates the surface of the lung. So wherever the surface of the lung goes, the pleural membrane goes with it. So these lungs are actually collapsed now. So normally they'd be in the chest. The diaphragm would move down. The ribs would move up and out. And that would increase the volume of the thorax reducing the pressure and the lungs would suck and fill up with air and they would fill the complete expanse of the thoracic cavity but now this lung is collapsed but the visceral pleural membrane is still invaginating the surface of it still adhering to the surface of it the parietal pleural membrane of course was in the thoracic cavity from which this has been removed from but we can just see there between two lobes of the lung we can see a little bit of um visceral pleural membrane there between these two sections of lung. And from this we can see it's a very thin but it's also a very tough membrane. So it's thin but it's tough. We can see it's holding quite a lot of weight there before it gave way. And that's invaginating the surface and we can't really peel this off because it's so well attached to the surface of the lung. But I think we can see there that the visceral pleura is going over the surface of the lung. And of course these lungs uh, are dead, they're completely, they're completely collapsed. So if we look at this one, what I've actually done on this one is I've intubated the trachea with a normal human endotracheal tube. And if we look at this trachea, if we zoom into that, I think you can probably see that there's rings of cartilage and I can feel the rings of cartilage underneath my fingers there. The rings of cartilage that are keeping the trachea open. And these rings of cartilage, like human rings of cartilage, are C-shaped. And at the back part there, you can feel there's a gap between the rings. And in life, of course, the esophagus would be immediately posterior to the anterior trachea. So I've intubated this, and you can see from the bubble here that I've blown up the endotracheal tube within the trachea. In fact, I'll just show you that, I think. So I can deflate the endotracheal tube. Here we take it out, it's deflated. When it's in the trachea, when I've intubated the trachea, I'm going to inflate it. And there we can see that's inflated. And that's going to form an airtight seal around about the outside of the trachea. And this is very important in human management, of course, because if that's completely inflated, that's going to occlude the lumen of the trachea other than the internal lumen of the endotracheal tube. And that means if the patient is to vomit, the vomit can't get past this blockage, this blown up balloon, but the air can get in and out so we can manage the airway. It's a definitive management of the airway. So I'm just letting that down now. Obviously, I don't need a laryngoscope to aid this intubation, so I'm intubating the trachea here. Once the trachea is intubated, I'm going to blow it up, blow the balloon up, and I'm checking on the pressure with this here. And actually there, you can actually see the trachea has blown up a little bit. I'm just going to make sure I've got a good airtight seal within the trachea. There we are. Now I'm just fitting, fitting an ordinary bag to this uh, endotracheal tube and I'm going to try and blow up these lungs. So this lung of course is completely collapsed 
there is no negative pressure from the pleural membrane keeping it open. But let's see what happens if I apply positive pressure. Normally, the diaphragm goes down, the ribs and intercostal muscles go up and out, and that generates a negative intrathoracic pressure, meaning the air is sucked in through the trachea. Obviously, that's not going to happen here. So what I'm going to do is apply positive pressure, just as we would in the clinical situation if the patient can't breathe for themselves. And we can see now that I'm starting to blow the lungs up. And that's come out, so let's try and put it back in again. They're a bit hard to blow up these lungs because obviously they've been dead and deflated for um, about 12 hours now, I think. I'm going to put that in a bit further. Try and get an airtight seal within the trachea. Blow that up. And again, we'll try to try to bag. And there we can see that the lungs are starting to inflate. Now, when I apply positive pressure like this, the lungs start to inflate. And then when I let go, the lungs deflate. Now, why are the lungs deflating when I let go? Why is the default position of the lung to be collapsed. I'm not doing anything there, it's just collapsing on its own accord. It's breathing out and collapsing on its own accord. Why is this? Well, as we mentioned, in the lung, there are millions of individual alveoli. And I have one alveoli here, which I'm going to blow up. This is a greatly enlarged alveoli. Not an alveoli, of course, it's a balloon. But the principle is the same. The alveoli have elastic walls, so it takes active pressure to blow them up, but when you let go, it simply deflates because of the elasticity of the walls of the alveoli. The alveoli contain elastic tissue in their walls, and it's exactly the same situation with the pneumothorax. Once there's no pressure holding the lung open, the elasticity of the alveoli will take over and the lung will collapse into this collapse situation. I'm just trying to blow this up again so we can see. So here we have a lung blown up. They're not blowing up as much as they would in life. But we can see they go down to this collapsed situation. So it's interesting to think that all of the time, in you right now, all of the time, Maybe you can see that one better, I'll move it around. In you just now, all of the time, the reason your lungs are inflated is because the parietal pleural membrane is attached to the top of the diaphragm and thoracic wall, because there's a visceral pleural membrane on top of the surface of the lung, and because there's a negative pressure between these two, holding them together. In humans, there's a negative pressure of about four millimetres of mercury, actually. It's a suctioning effect. So the reason your lungs are inflated is not because someone's blowing in with a big tube, but because the visceral pleural membrane is sucking onto the parietal pleural membrane, and the parietal pleural membrane is held expanded by the rigid thoracic cage. And of course, when the lungs are collapsed like this, what we need to do is take measures to reinflate them by reintroducing a negative pressure between the two pleural membranes by taking the air out from the two pleural membranes, normally with the aid of a chest strain. Very noisy bag, this, isn't it? <laughs>